Good morning, everyone. I am so delighted to be here with you today to share some information on the care and conservation of fabrics and embroideries. This subject has been a passion of mine for more decades than I care to mention, actually. <laughs> I feel that it started way back in World War II in London, where every article of clothing was so precious and we were taught to, to make do and mend and the techniques that accompanied this requirement. Hence, I have had a needle in my hand since I was four years old, which is a very long time if you think about that. <laughs> but as many of you know, it led to another more sophisticated passion and that was of embroidery or embellishment of fabric is the definition of embroidery actually teaching its history, care, and conservation of treasures, antique and contemporary, and a lifetime of spending part of every day with some form of needle in my hand. It is my solace and my relaxation. It is my yoga and my tai chi. Yeah. So a little background. Cloth is something that we all take for granted that literally forms the fabric of our lives. We weave it, we wear it, and we wear it out. We dye it, and we live and die in it. We cut it and create it to give a pattern and identity to our daily lives. We wear it, spread our dinner table with it, hang it on our walls and at our windows, sleep under it, and in Shakespeare's time, they even hid behind it. We wrap ourselves in it, and because it is so plentiful and seems so indestructible, we don't pay much attention to the sources. Historical textiles exist because they have been cared for. Many just as beautiful an art form as any Whistler or Sargent painting, or as poetic as a Robert Frost poem. We treasure them and the tools used to create them. I have an embarrassingly large, collect, large collection of these things, I'm afraid. This year, I have had the privilege of working with Jennifer Neeling in the NHA's fabulous and voluminous textile and embroidery collection, photographing, cataloging, and conserving many of its beautiful quilts, mainly. I also have had the honor and privilege of working with our new curator, Dan Elias, to clean, prepare, and present the exhibit of clothing and quilts at the Hadwin House on Main Street, which I invite you to visit as a must-see destination. Chances are that each of you have a textile problem to solve, whether you are aware of it or not. I hope that some of this basic information offered during this presentation will prove helpful. There are so many magic tricks for the care and conservation of your treasures, so I offer some do's and don'ts and tips to get you started. So behind me, I have two baskets, one of do's and one of don'ts. So I'm going to start with the don'ts and get that out of the way, all right? So what is the famous P word? Plastic. Plastic. Don't use it unless you have to. It is okay to use these plastic bags for a short-term storage area, but if you seal it up, you're sealing in all kinds of gases that plastic is made from, and your yarns eventually will get so sticky that you won't be able to use them. So plastic is a big naughty P word. That even applies to um, things like uh, hangers. <coughs> the, the plastic hangers are okay for, for um, short-term things, but I really strongly suggest that you use, you find some pretty hangers that are covered because that will protect your embroideries and your clothing. The, um, the, when, you're, when you get your clothes home from the dry cleaners, what does it have on it? Plastic. plastic. So please, with a P, remove those plastic covers. 
Also, what are, what are they hanging on? Metal. Metal. Wire hangers. Eliminate those also. What happens with plastic if you keep it going on, on fabric or any clothing for a long time? Is that you'll see it start to fade. It'll change color because the gases do that. So I hope that's a tip that everyone can um, take home with them. Um, <clears throat> some other don'ts are, when you're working, pretend this is a wonderful Wedgwood cup of tea. Okay. Where would it be if you were working? <laughs> Way over there. <laughs> All right. Same with this. Very tempting to have a little munch when you're working. Put that where the cup of tea is as well. Okay. And before you even start, how about this? No, that is a do not. No. This will make your hands sticky. You will transfer it to your yarn and your fabric, and you will be sorry about that too on the long term basis. And then we have a little collection like this. What do we do with these? <laughs> no, you don't have to throw them out. Just put them in the kitchen or somewhere. But um, the, the secret of these three, this is a Sharpie permanent pen. This is just a ballpoint pen. And this is a um, permanent marker. Permanent, there's another P. Don't trust that it's permanent until you have tested it. Very important, because they say that they're permanent, but from a fabric and embroidery standpoint, they may, may not be permanent. They may have slipped up in the manufacturing or something. But test, <coughs> test, test for, these, for everything, actually. Another thing that we avoid is anything to do with light, the flame. Anything to do with the flame has to go right over there with the teacup. Okay. Now, the, uh, in terms of wrapping things for storage, that is a, one of the things of conservation and preservation that is so important. And um, I have a little box here that, isn't, that is not acid-free. So if you're going to keep your yarns or something in a little box like that, just line it with some acid-free paper first. <coughs> and then you'll be all safe. And if you're packing things away like a, a wedding dress or, a, or some kind of treasure, use acid-free tissue paper. And I have some of that here to show you. It's different from the, te the, the paper that we normally use, like tissue. There's two kinds. There's this soft tissue, like our regular tissue paper, which is also acid-free. And this one is a very thick paper that you could use for lining boxes and things if you're packing treasures away for a long time. And both of all these things are available from a place called University Products. Um, packing again. Never, ever use colored tissue paper, ever, 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 because it will, under humid humidity conditions and cold, and then um, going back into heat, and that sort of thing like attics and, and, and damp basements, this will bleed. And it will um, not be a good thing when you find out what happened to, it, to your piece. So, I'm going to get into framing, because framing embroideries um, is one of the things that we do frequently. And not un until quite recently, actually, people were not aware of the difference between acid-free matting and, and um, regular matting. Regular matting, thank you, son, gives you a yellow edging. Quite quickly, that means that it's acidic versus something like this that is perfectly 
clear and perfectly white, edges and everything, so there will be no acid transferring onto your piece with that. But if you s go home and you find that you have anything, whether it's a photograph or a lithograph or a, a painting or anything to do with embroidery and fabric, and you see that yellow line, time to do something about it because it will absolutely destroy the thing that's underneath it, whether it's paper or, um, or fabric. So I think that pretty much takes care of the don'ts. So let's get on to the do's. Some of these things that I've given you just a little um, really quick run through on your piece of paper, your one sheet of paper about do's and don'ts, and then some tips. Well, let's go back to the do's for a moment. The sun is being very nice to me because, can you see that? Nice sunlight on embroidery? That's a bad thing, very bad. Any fabric goes to um, keep it out of the sunlight because it will fade, it will rot. And this is a way of, of um, holding needlework by wrapping just a regular old roll. You can use a paper towel roll or, or a, if it's a small piece of toilet roll uh, inside, wrap it first with acid-free tissue paper. And then you can roll anything on it. Do not fold anything that you don't have to fold because that gives a crease. The crease was, will pick up um, moisture and it will just start rotting and you'll never get rid of that. Just a risk. Yes. So when you roll it, should it be face inside? Face to inside, this yeah. way, yeah. yes. Because if, if by any chance you spilled your cup of tea, and had it too close, um, you can fix it on the back side, but you can't fix it on the front side. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> so I'm going to go back to framing for a minute because uh, what we need to do with framing is make sure that the back is covered because the back is where Little creatures, un uninvited visitors, can get in if there's a tear or something on the back side. So go check your things, whether they're paper or, or fabric, and make sure that everything is sealed up tight. Um, check for little insects first, of course, but um, make sure that everything's tight. Now, I get a lot of people asking me, um, about framing samplers. This is just a little one because I just couldn't bring a big one. Um, in the days when these were done, this one was done in um, 1877 and the Amelia Ledger was nine years old. So that's been framed for a long time probably. And um, if I took this out of this frame and wanted to put a, a mat to keep the embroidery away from the glass, chances are that if I took that glass off, the stitches would come with it. Because it's been there for such a long time. So my advice to everybody is if you have things like this, leave them that way. Just make sure that you have a tight backing on them. Any questions? Okay. So, in terms of pr preserving just everyday textiles, oh, first of all, let's get to some washing here. Um, the only thing to wash fabrics with is ivory. No woolite, throw it out. Woolite has a very chemical compound in it that rots fabrics very quickly. No woolite. They changed the formula about 20 years ago. So that ivory, you can get ivory flakes, don't use ivory snow, that's chemical also. But ivory flakes, or you can, you can shave these ivory bars of soap and um, make a, a very weak solution in warm water, no hot, hot water. 
either. So, when I'm washing anything that is very fragile and is a treasure, I put it between, and this is a standard um, way of doing it, fiberglass screening. I make it, like, make it like a little sandwich. Whoops! <laughs> Didn't make it a big <laughs> a sandwich, but anyway, this is a piece of really beautiful lace, and I would like to wash it. So I have made this, this little pocket of, of fiberglass screening. So what you do is um, just running stitch. And after you've put it in there, you running stitch across the top, obviously, because I didn't do that. So then you just take this, this into a, a bathtub or a sink. And don't scrunch it or anything, but just lay it in your hands like this and dunk it. Don't try and f squeeze it or rub it, but just dunk it like this over and over and over again. And then you're using... Are you using regular water? No, you're using distilled water on anything that's a real treasure. So you do that with it, and then rinse and rinse and rinse. Multiple rinses are necessary. Lay it flat to dry on a white towel. Why white? You don't want a colored one to bleed on your, on your treasure, just in case. Prevention is another P. Prevention is better than cure. Okay? So some of the things, um, if you're not washing, and you have a piece of embroidery that's not, not glazed, not, doesn't have a glass on it, and you want to get all the dust off it, take your little vacuum brush and wrap it in cheesecloth. Open the, open the vacuum cleaner as wide as it will go, in other words, it's the least amount of pressure that there is there. And don't use it like an iron, but just dab it all over, like that. Uh, what, what is you using there? Cheesecloth. Cheesecloth. Mm-hmm. Wrap, wrap the little brush in, in that. And very gently, you put your, you'll put your hand on the piece, and you'll just do that. Takes a while. That's what I was doing with the Hadwin House textiles all winter long. <laughs> with a wonderful um, intern named Jamie, who, uh, Jeremy, who was just like a sponge. He was just amazing. So that was very helpful. So th these are just things that are um, actually uh, in your household. These are cedar chips. These can be um, just hung everywhere. The thing about cedar chips and um, moth flakes, which you also have in a bag, don't touch anything with moth flakes. Um, hang them so that they're not touching anything. This is a wonderful product called Damperid. That doesn't touch anything either, but if you have it in your in your drawer or in your closet, um, it does absorb the, the moisture and keeps everything smelling very nice. That comes in lots of different ways. So, another little more um, sophisticated thing. This is very similar looking to a pen but it's a testing pen. It's an acid testing pen. And if it turns purple, you can use it. If you run it against a piece of fabric or a, or a, um, um, a mat or anything, um, use this to see if it's, if it's um, acid-free. If it's purple, it's acid-free. It's called Line Co. But what do you, you take the top off and run something? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just like a pen. If, it's, if it turns yellow or amber, that's acid. Throw it out. How do you spell it? It's a pH pen, pH testing oh, okay. pen. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
by Leinko. So there's all sorts of these little tricks. Um, if you're storing something one on top of another or something like that, um, if you have those things to do. The, uh, there are plenty of sizes of acid-free boxes like this that we use in the museum. And um, they are guaranteed acid-free. They're made specially for that. But um, we, were, we were taking not so much embroideries, but pieces of clothing like baby clothes and things like that, and putting them in boxes this size. And um, so you, you first of all line it with acid-free tissue. Then you um, lay your first piece down and you separate anything that's, that you're going to stack one on top of another with mylar or the acid-free tissue. But mylar is a great protector and it's, it's just like a little um, plastic, clear plastic, and it really does preserve the things, especially if you've, for instance, ironed something and you don't want to crease it. You can just use this too. It's perfectly clear. And you can use that to separate one piece from another. So Liz, I recently introduced mylar versus plastic is because Because this is a special formula. Mm -hmm. It's it's not a, a gas based um, it's not a gas based product. It's made specially for the conservation and preservation. So, one last thing, I collect these little bags because they're so useful for everything. Throw the plastic away and um, just find these little bags that are cloth and you'll be so much better off with all your, saving all your pieces. This is another very useful product in, in conservation and preservation. It's just plain little Q-tips you can get into the creases of of um, dresses and things, especially antique dresses. And we also have a special thread that's 100% mercerized co co cotton, and that's what we do a lot of our repairs with. So these things are all pretty basic, but very important. And um, I have forgotten one thing here that I have, uh, two things actually. One is unbleached muslin. If you're mounting a, a sampler or want, want a sampler mounted, um, washed unbleached muslin is the, is the base that you stitch it onto before you take it to the framer. And if the framer says no, don't believe him. Come and see to me. <laughs> and, on the, and if you have a footstool or a, an armchair or something, um, this goes back to the little visitors that we don't want to, to um, have. This is called scrim, and um, just replace the, what's on the bottom of your armchair or the bottom of your, your um, dining room chair, or anything, footstools, anything like that. This is totally, um, it, it's not acid free, but it's totally um, acceptable from, by the conservation people. And it's very dense. No, once you put this on the back of your, or the bottom of your chair, it, no creature will ever get in there. So, um, so, yes. Um, no, not quite. It's a different product again. It's the same idea. Tyvek is, is, um, is more of a, um, a builder's type of thing. It's, um, this is more from the, from the furnishing standpoint, from the decorative arts standpoint. Can most of these products be obtained through that university product? Yes. Yes, they are. So, any questions, anybody? I do. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Could we go back to where you are putting the, your fabric that you're going to wash in the black? Uh, it looks like black uh -huh. netting. What is that called again? That's fiberglass screening. Fiberglass screening. You can get that from any hardware store. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, my allergies are getting to me. <laughs> 
This can be also used for um, not just for washing, but for um, for preserving something that you're um, working on. If you're afraid that it might it might get um, tampered with or anything, you can just pop it in a pocket like this. I have many in all different shapes and sizes for things that I do. So. Okay. Yes. It's, well, it's, it doesn't really matter because it's on the bottom of your, of your furniture. It's not touching any fabric at all. Because it's, it's a barrier, yes. Turn your, your furniture upside down and you're not touching anything except the webbing, which doesn't matter anymore. Yes. If you buy a new white canvas that's uh, not painted or but has just the black lines, what, what, how are they putting that design on there? With what pattern? What? They're using a, um, a, sometimes a permanent marker, providing they have tested it. That's very, very important for testing. Um, there are uh, needlework markers like called Nepo markers. I'm not sure if I brought one of those with me. Um, no, I didn't. But there, there um, another product that, that is very good for lining a canvas is rubber dub. Remember the laundry markers called rubber dub? No. <laughs> you can still get them. <laughs> And they are, um, they fade with the, with the um, wearing and washing of fabric, which is what you want it to do, basically. Yeah. But there's, uh, I thought I brought another piece, another thing here, but I didn't. I'm sorry. I didn't bring one to show you. But um, does that answer your question? Does that answer your question? Hi, Karen. Mm -hmm. For painting, yeah. for paint, uh, acrylics. I see. Acrylics. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can you explain again what you um, mentioned about before you had the your your um, your stitching frame? You backed it with cloth, with linen. Oh, oh linen. muslin, muslin, unbleached, yeah. washed, washed, unbleached muslin. You back it. Yes. That, is, that makes it completely um, acid-free. But you have to also remember, it's sort of an oxymoron in a way, because none of those pieces that were done in the 19th century or earlier were acid-free anyway, but you're just helping them to stay, to stay nice longer. That's all you can do, because none of those fabrics and, and wools were acid-free in those days. I do. Um. In self work or gold work, a lot of times they recommend using bees packs. Mm -hmm. Is that a pack insects? It does if you don't frame it, if you don't encase it. Yes. Could you repeat that question, please? Um, In um, self work and gold work, they often recommend that you wax your threads with bees packs to make them stronger. And my question was, does that attract insects? And the answer is, if it's not glazed, it, it could. But beeswax is a natural product, so that's a plus in its, in its favor. <clears throat> yes? If you already have some yellowing on fabric, old fabric, how do you remove it? Well, you have to treat all those things um, item by item. One of the things that, ye that removes yellowing, believe it or not, is buttermilk. But if it's been there for a long time, chances are that it's, it's not going to change. It's just part of the history of the piece. Miss <laughs> 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 Gilbert, is there any way to get mildew out of a woven fabric? 
again, it's, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's a piece by piece experience for that because you have to consider the type of material, the type of thread that is on there, if there is any thread on there. Um, you can use ivory snow, ivory flakes, I mean, sorry, and uh, try it. It's just a matter of trial and error on, on those things. Milk can get some mildew out of things, just plain milk, not buttermilk, plain milk. You could try soaking it in that, but um, mildew is a really tough one because it's all the um, fibers just absorb it, they're like sponges. Yes? Can you suggest how to clean hook rugs, which are made with strips of wool fabric woven into burlap? Um, how big is the rug? Well, like little ones and I have big ones. But little ones, you can ones. use this method here. Okay. With the, uh, with the fiberglass screening and a mild solution of ivory soap. The big ones, um, really, you only can do spot cleaning. Don't have a dry cleaner do it because they will use chemicals on it, and that will really rot it out very quickly. Um, we, we do, as, as you all <laughs> just laughed about, um, say that some of, the, some of all these stains are the history of the piece, mm -hmm. and there's nothing you can do about it. But you're always safe in using just a, wild, a mild solution of ivory soap with water, it's distilled water. Any other questions? Yes. I just have one last question. I've always heard that lavender was a, a deterrent uh, for bugs. Is that lavender is, is very nice, put it in a sachet. Yes. Insects don't like that. Visitors don't like that. So that, cedar chips, um, moth flakes, and if, as long as you're not touching anything, you're encasing them in a, in a bag, hanging somewhere. But um, if you put moth flakes in a drawer and then put your things on it, you'll be sorry. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I know that you guys are going to have many more questions. You all have Elizabeth's card, so I'm sure she will be open to you reaching out to her for any sure. questions that you have. And I think some of my pieces might have done the right thing. Yeah. So, I, I know what you're all going to do. You're all going to run home and see. Yeah. Do I have access to your favorite child? But it's been a pleasure to talk to you about it.